What is up guys, Subzeric here, back with my top comps of patch 12.9. So, I'm going to do it a little bit different this time, because this, you know, for fun patch is actually very different from a lot of patches that we've had in the past, in that you get the dragon egg every game. If you guys haven't played on the new patch, every game you're going to get a dragon egg on your bench that hatches uh, somewhere between 3 and 26 turns, is I'm pretty sure the longest one and the varying degrees of stuff in them. The one thing that all of the Dragon Eggs have is a Tome of Traits, um, but the three turn one only has a Tome of Traits, whereas the longest one has, I believe, two Radiant items plus another regular item. So a lot of stuff going on with the Dragon Eggs. And I think the biggest thing is that because everyone has a Tome of Traits, people's boards are capped out a lot higher. You're seeing a lot more you know, seven mutant boards or, you know, six striker boards, those kind of things. And because of that, I think it's actually really hard to say, you know, this one comp is the strongest comp this patch. You should be spamming just this one comp. I still think, I still think if you're a new player that you should definitely focus on playing one or two comps just to simplify the game for yourself. So like, honestly, if you're a new player, just spamming, you know, six arcanists or, you know, four striker scrap variation, I think is really good. And we'll get into some of those comps. Um, However, I think the best way to play this patch is to just play around what you high roll. So if you crack your Tome of Traits early and you hit a Mutant Spat and it's a Synaptic Blobby, then you should absolutely be playing Synaptic Mutants. Uh, if you crack your Tome and you get a, like, Striker Emblem, then okay, you can definitely play around Striker. If you get your first Augment and it's, you know, plus one Striker, and then you crack open your Tome and you get another Striker Emblem, like, okay, I can play around this. If you crack open your Tome and you get a Clockwork Emblem, you can play around comps that utilize Clockwork. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of different strong comps, and so I'm not actually going to put these comps in order because I think any one of them can cap out high enough to win you a game. You just have to figure out what your spot is and play any of these comps or even a comp that might not even be on this list. You know, something really creative if you just put in the units that you two star strong units. Um, without uh, with with that being said, I did want to give you guys a comp list of comps that I think are strong right now, and I think these are some of the comps that can cap out high enough to win you lobbies. Um, so uh, I'm going to break this down into a reroll and a non-reroll, um, just because I thought, you know, that's an easy way to do it. And I think some people really like reroll, some people really don't like reroll. Um, so we're going to do a few reroll comps and then get into the non-reroll. In general, I think reroll is pretty weak right now, um, but there are definitely some reroll comps that you can make work. Um, the a small thing about this patch is because you have a dragon egg on your bench, if it's one of those longer eggs, it can actually mess up with your bench space because you don't get your entire bench, you're losing a slot because of the dragon egg. So that's something to keep in mind if you're rerolling. All right. So without further ado, let's get into the reroll section. Our first reroll comp is Talon reroll. This is just a generic, uh, you know, debonair Talon reroll comp that we've seen basically the entire set. Um, nice thing about the dragon eggs and spatulas in general is that you can get a debonair spatula and you can get an assassin spatula, both of which are hugely influential for this comp. Scrap is good as well. It means you can not play something like a Blitzcrank and end up playing something like a Braum, though, you know, Blitzcrank and Talon have really good synergy, so it's not the best, but like late game, you would definitely play a Braum 2 over Blitzcrank 2 if you had the Scrap Spat, so that's something to keep in mind, but really you're digging for those Assassin Spats and those Debonair Spats, and then you can augment this comp. You can end up playing maybe six Assassins or, you know, say just cutting the Nocturne for something stronger, or if you have Debonair, you can play five Debonair, maybe even seven Debonair. Um, Lots of lots of variety that you can play around with just this base comp where you're really going to be rolling mostly for Talon, uh, Syndra, Blitzcrank. There's also variations uh, where you put in things like Zyra to get in Scholar um, with the with the Syndra. So that's something you can think about as well. Rolling down for Zyra's as well. So there are multiple variations of this comp. Uh, this is just a pretty base one. Um, but you know, if you high roll like five Zyra's early game, I would definitely look at potentially playing Zyra three. Um, or like maybe even good items for Zyra, though in that case, maybe you're not even playing Talon Reroll. Um, conditions for this comp, speaking of which, I would say if you get a two-star Debonair Talon early game, I would definitely look at playing it. Um, the thing about this comp is a little bit hard to force because if you are carrying just a single two-star Talon and it's not Debonair, you're kind of doomed. Um, so say you two-star your Talon before you actually hit the Debonair version, then you're stuck carrying a two-star Talon the entire game until you hit Talon 3. Um, so you really want to play this comp when you actually hit a two-star or just a single Debonair Talon early, but you want to hit Debonair Talon before you hit two-star Talon, or else um, it just becomes a lot harder to play out the game. Um, 
So that's something to keep in mind as well with this comp, that if you end up in a spot where you have a two-star talent and he's not Debonair, I would really think twice about like playing this actual comp because you're going to take a lot more damage because Talon's going to be so much weaker. He's not going to hold items as well because he's not going to have that huge bonus from being Debonair. So yeah, that is something to keep in mind. But yeah, Talon rule, it's, it's pretty basic. Um, if you've watched my previous tier list, you've seen this comp before. Next comp um, is another reroll comp. As I said, this is Ash reroll, the Syndicate uh, Ash reroll, where we're just playing five Syndicates, and then we're getting in a few extra units for some synergies. We're getting in Jin plus Oriana for Sniper plus Clockwork, and then throwing in Senna for Enchanter plus Socialite. Um, Senna is a really, really strong unit this patch. I've seen some disgusting games where people are just carrying Senna up until like stage five just to Senna to. Um, just because Enchanters are really strong, they were buffed this patch, um, and she's just a good AD item holder. So, um, this is something that's not that specific for Asherol, because Asherol, your items will usually be on Ash, but some of the other comps, uh, we'll see, definitely play Senna as well, and she can be a really strong AD item holder. But yeah, this is your generic Ash reroll comp, um, uh, mostly rolling down for Ash, perhaps Zyra as well if you hit a lot of them, or Ghana 3 is also a really nice one to hit. Darius 3 is okay, it's kind of like whatever if you hit it, but it might stabilize you. Uh, again, use some HP in the mid-game. Um, but yeah, pretty straightforward if you get some kind of like sniper augment or one of the uh, syndicate augments, like one for all or payday, then you can definitely look at playing this comp. Though, it's another one. Any reroll comp, if you try to force around uh, like getting an early augment, it is risky. Um, it means you can cap out really high, right? So if you like get payday as your first augment and you have zero ashes, um, you can play ash reroll. And you might go first and you might go eighth. It's probably like makes the the variance of that game really high you know really high chance of going first really high chance of going eighth because either you hit and you have a really high capped comp or you don't hit and then you die um so i i generally more like playing reroll from spots where i'm like okay i have a two star ash at two three okay maybe i'll play ash reroll um not so much you know i grab this augment and i hard force it but it, it can also work if you hard force from an augment perspective so yeah um as far as spatulas i mean obviously you can get a sniper spat or a um, you know a sniper emblem or a syndicate emblem. Pretty straightforward. You know, there's no enchanter emblem, so don't worry about that. Bodyguard is okay, but you wouldn't be playing Darius plus Braum anyway, so it's a bit tough to get in four bodyguards. You can take out Sen and play four with like Morgana being a bodyguard, um, but I would prefer like a syndicate and then potentially play seven syndicates. Cut this, um, cut this Senna, play seven syndicates, and then your board is quite capped. Um, or something like a sniper and like cut this and play for sniper. So a lot of stuff you can do with this comp um, with the spatula. So or the the emblem always called spatula. Um, but yeah, that is Asher roll. All right, let's go into the next one. Our last reroll comp. This is Trinomir Chemtech Challenger reroll. Um, it's popped up more recently, you know, way back when Warwick reroll was the the hotness, but now it's all on Trinomir. Um, so, yep, this is a pretty generic, just five Chemtech, four Challenger, Trinomir board. Once again, there's some augments that make you really want to play this, um, but it is a bit risky to completely force a comp just with an augment. But say you get, like, one Trinomir early, and then you get a good augment for it. I would definitely think about playing this comp if you have good items for it. Um, or if you get, like, a two-star Trinomir, like, pretty early, like, end of stage two, beginning of stage three, um, that would definitely classify as, like, a high roll, where I would definitely look to start playing Trinomir. Um, so, yeah. It's, it's in general a pretty strong comp. I really don't know what else to say. Um, utilizes uh, the emblems well, you know, you can get in 7 Chemtech, you can get in 6 Challenger. Um, Clockwork Emblem is one that I think is really strong, and Orianna's a really good unit, but you can always, if you get a Clockwork Emblem, cut Orianna, then you just have this free uh, Camille plus uh, one Clockwork thing going, like something like Zac. Um, and then you have two Clockwork in for free, and then you can look at getting like 6 Challenger or 7 Chemtech, um, something like that. So. Once again, uh, quite strong reroll comp. Um, if you want to play reroll, play one of these three. Okay, so those are the reroll comps. Um, let's get into the non reroll comps. And the first one I have for you is Draven. This is a Debonair Draven carry comp that uses four clockwork, actually. So, like I was talking about in the, um, in the last one, um, clockwork. Uh, if you get plus one clockwork, there's actually a lot of stuff you can do. Plus one clockwork, I think, is just incredibly strong in this patch right now, just because the buff of four clockwork or six clockwork is just so huge. I mean, six clockwork, 80% attack speed plus 15% per augment. I mean, even four clockwork, 35% attack speed is a lot when you compare it to something like Challenger, where in two Challengers, you're only getting 25% attack speed after every kill. 
Um, whereas um, for Clockwork, it's 35 plus 10. So by the end of the game, you're getting 65% attack speed. That's better than four Challenger. And you're getting it for the entire fight and you're getting it on your entire team. So even your front line's getting Clockwork, which will help them generate mana and cast faster. Um, so I think in general, or Clockwork, or just, just Clockwork um, emblem in general is really strong. Obviously in this comp, you could just take out something like a zillion and play any other unit uh, and use the Clockwork. Um, so, you know, you could get in something like an Enchanter, just like a random Morgana, and then you can also look at potentially getting in Syndicates, uh, you know, like uh, getting in maybe an Ash somewhere at nine, and then you'll have another Sniper and you'll get in a Syndicate here. You'd probably need another sniper, a sniper emblem to make that really work. And then you're really playing snipers, not Draven. Um, this is more uh, um, a, a Draven comp, even though you're playing the secondary carries of the snipers and the Orianas. Um, but yeah, I think this is an incredibly strong comp. I think in general on this patch, Draven is quite strong. I think they kind of overbuffed him a bit. So if there is a non rural comp that you're looking at forcing, uh, I would definitely look at potentially playing this comp. Um, you know, you're not going to have Zeri early, but like, honestly, uh, you can replace any Debonair with Zeri. It's just you're not going to get the sniper value with Jin. Um, so it's like totally fine to play this comp at eight with like uh, a Syndra in here instead of Zeri. Um, and then you can even think about getting Scholar in in certain ways. But I really do like playing the four clockwork, but you can theoretically like cut two clockwork. Um, what would it be? Yeah, yeah. The, these two clockwork. You, you would want to play Oriana and Camille. Um, and then if you had, say, Cinder in, you could get in something uh, like a Silco for Scholar and then just some random other unit, like I was saying, just Morgana for more frontline. You'll have the Enchanter buff. Uh, like I was saying before, you could get in like a Senna, uh, depending on where the Socialite Hex is. So a lot of stuff you can do there. But I think in general, Draven's just a little over buffed. Um, so I would definitely look at carrying him from most spots where you can. It's kind of like the opposite of last patch where like, Sivir was kind of overbuffed and she was really strong and Draven was kind of you would like you'd always want to carry a Sivir over a Draven in most scenarios okay not always but in a lot of scenarios you'd play Sivir over Draven now it's kind of flipped where you'd rather play Draven over Sivir um so yeah pretty cool comp uh and I think Draven carry is just too strong and this is a good variation of it um okay so next we have an example of a comp where you have to hit a spatula an emblem um to to play this comp this is synaptic mutants um so I, I can't really specify here which mutant this is, but I'm talking about synaptics here, uh, and that's why we have the Ari in, and that's why we only have four mutants, because she would have the mutant spat. Uh, synaptic mutants with Ari is kind of broken. If you hit a synaptic lobby and you get an Ari, legit Ari 1 can just stabilize you um, to maybe go 9, depending on the strength of the lobby. Uh, maybe you have to hit an Ari 2 to stabilize. Best in slot Ari uh, with a synaptic spat is blue buff plus gunblade. Um, Ari doesn't actually mana lock at all with blue buff. Um, so what that means is she's just going to cast, the orbs are going to go out, they're going to come back in, and then she's just going to immediately recast if she has blue buff synaptic. Um, so they're going to go out and come back in if you have uh, five mutant, right? So that you get the extra mana reduction. Um, so blue buff is best in slot on her just because um, she's just going to be casting out, in, out, in, out, in, just absolutely wiping the entire enemy team. And if you have something like a gunblade on her, that's going to help her heal up. Um, uh, which is something that Ari really needs because she is sort of like a, you know, it's it's hard for her to just stand in the back and do everything. Usually she's going to end up walking up at some point. You can even look at putting her third hex, but I really like keeping her on the back. I really, I like her ke keeping her on the rim of the map, basically, is the idea. So you can put her somewhere like here, you can put her somewhere like here, you can put her somewhere like here. You can even put her somewhere like here if you're really um, adventurous and you feel like you have a good enough frontline or you have some defensive augments. Um, the thing is, if you put Ari somewhere um, really like like here um, would be an example of like a hex that I really would hate. Um, the the problem is that you know you'll have an assassin that'll jump back here, or you know some unit that'll get uh, back here somehow, uh, and then Ari's gonna turn around and cast on this unit, throw her orbs out, and she's gonna hit nothing. If you have her on the rim. Even if there's like an assassin here, she's going to hit at least this unit and then potentially hit a unit up here. It's a little whack if there's a, a unit down here, which is why I really like something like this, where like maybe she hits this, but oftentimes she'll be hitting a unit here or here and then she'll get a good angle um, or just even just backlining her. I think it's completely fine. Um, and then, you know, she'll always get a good angle. You know, she's never going to be hitting like nothing unless there's a unit over here and then she ults them. And, you know, sometimes Ari trolls, so you have to do your best to... Um, 
to control her positioning with her ults, which is something that I think even myself I haven't completely figured out yet. Um, but I think putting her on the rim is definitely one way to do it. I really don't like having her like any of these hexes or something like this. Um, I would definitely keep her on the rim. You know, if she's somewhere here, um, yeah, I guess like the further up she is, the harder it is because she might end up casting. You really just have to be careful for like assassins or units that are going to get to your back line somehow. Um, and it also depends on how strong your front line is, right? If your front line is really strong, then you can think about putting her this far up. Whereas if your front line's weak, then you can just put her on the back and, you know, your front line's going to die fast enough that she'll be able to cast and it'll be fine. But bottom of the line is, if you get a mutant spat, slap it on Ari and you're, you're going to acquire free LP if it's a synaptic lobby. Um, there, of course a ton of other mutations that are really strong. So, you know, you can look at like cybernetic mutants. If you get a spatula, then you can look at playing something like a Jinx and, you know, figuring out the rest of the synergy around that. You don't have to play Cho'Gath, so then you could potentially fit in some more units. Um, you know, there's, I mean, there's there's a lot of different mutations, so it's hard for me to cover every single one here. I haven't messed really with like Adrenaline Rush, but I've seen some people use Adrenaline Rush on Sivir, so that's potentially something that you can do. Um, something like Elderwood Mutant, like the scaling one. I mean, at those points, you definitely want to be playing like a Kaisa, and then maybe, um, you know, you're just getting in supplementary units, so you're playing this kind of board, and then you probably don't play this guy, you end up playing something like a Kha'Zix, cut this guy, and ideally play something like a Camille plus an Orianna, so that you can get your challengers in there, uh, and then, you know, like plus one here, ideally some kind of front line, maybe like a really tanky Vi would be something that would be really nice with this comp. So you just play five mutants. And then if you have a plus one mutants pet, um, you know, if this is something like the Elderwood mutant uh, metamorphosis where it scales up your team, you could put it on Oriana, you could put it on Vi, um, and maybe even get seven mutant in at level nine, or even just by like cutting Oriana and saying, screw it. Okay, I'll get seven mutant and that's better than clockwork too. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff you can do with mutants. I think seven mutants, a lot of them are really strong and there are a lot of really creative um, uses of spatula, of emblem, I'm sorry. Um, that you can make when playing multiple mutants so definitely 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 look to play mutants um in a lot of scenarios if you get a mutant spatula with most mutations there's some like adrenaline rush i'm really not that fond of but even that one's you know it's not terrible it's just i haven't really been able to make use of it but something like uh synaptic is good uh cybernetic is good um elderwood metamorphosis i think is fine um the execution one is like it's like okay i think i think the biggest ones are synaptic and um and cybernetic i think i would definitely play around those if you get a mutant spat um but yeah mutants in general i think there's a lot of different comps you can play uh also just kaisa's light game oh and also obviously dark star one um the one where when your units dies you get more um you get more stats you, you get more ad and ap that's another big one to play around if you can get a dark star spatula and play like dark star jinx um that's pretty gross or like a dark star victor can be really good uh and then you just slam a lot of zz rots portals because those count as units so when your unit dies it'll give your uh all your mutant stats and then it'll turn into a little zz rot a little uh little cockroach and then when that unit dies it'll uh buff up all your units as well so yeah mutants really really cool um all right the next comp i got for you guys is five innovators um and this is the oriana like seraphine more like ap carry variation uh so you're gonna put items on oriana like death cap like uh um Spear of Shojin so that you'll cast faster, or a blue buff also works as well. Uh, items on Seraphine like Shojin as well, like Morellos, um, those kind of things. Um, this is, I think, actually a very strong version of the comp. Uh, the current, I think they're rank 1 NA, Dish Soap. Uh, he, was, he was rank 1 a few days ago, I don't know if he's still rank 1. Um, but Dish Soap really, really likes this 5 innovator um, Oriana slash Seraphine carry. Obviously, if you get like a Chalice um and you slam it on one of these that's really good because we're playing two ap carries and then you know you can give it to like zillion as well so his bombs will do a little bit more damage um but yeah i he he really likes this variation he really likes playing ap flex and then on vi you can put stuff like the ionic spark to reduce the mr of your team and also just you know it'll it'll supplement the damage of your or on your seraphian um so i think this is actually a very strong variant um you can also very easily get in stuff like a senna at level nine or you know if you Feel like you have enough front line if there's something like a um you know like phony front line then you can even think about taking out this morgana and then just playing senna for your enchanter um just in case you want to hold ad items because jace is probably going to be a frontliner and uh israel is not the best item holder um and you can also obviously play this like if you have plus one innovator you can very easily play this 
as just a seven innovator board like so um and then you can even take out vi if you really want to if you really need to get in um if you really need to get in enchanters you can play morgana or senna but vi the reason vi is in is because she's just a, a really solid frontliner and you can also potentially get an uh enforcer if you have like a plus one enforcer somewhere or if you you know figure out if you can also just end up pivoting this into like a Genovator's comp with like caitlin plus Jin. in which case you're not playing the oriana um and you're no you, you'd still play the vi of course um so something like this which is a level eight board um so that's this is also totally reasonable as like a Genovator's board um so innovators are pretty cool in this patch because you can much more easy get that um innovator emblem and then play around seven innovators um, I haven't seen it like winning every single lobby, so I don't think it's like a free win if you get an innovator spat, but I still think it is very strong. Um, and if you look at the item win rates, which we'll get into later, I'm pretty sure it's still one of the higher spatulas. Um, so yeah, that is innovators. And I really think that Oriana Seraphine uh, duo carry AP version of the comp is quite strong. All right, um, our next comp, an oldie but a goodie, uh, Scrap Striker Sivir. Um, this is just a, just a super generic version of the comp though i don't know uh i, I should have looked at this ahead of time this version is playing rexi i think jarvan is just straight up better here uh yeah th this is the version um that i would always play around um like i was saying though uh rexi may have to end up coming in um if we end up in a situation where we're like plus one striker you can end up playing a rexi here and cutting certain things or you can just play this at level nine but you know things if you feel like you end up having enough frontline then something like a braum can just come out you can take a blitzcrank and then or, you know, you can take, like, Echo and not end up playing, like, a super scrap-heavy version of the comp. So, you know, like, cut these units, um, just play your two scrap with uh, these two, and then come up with another unit. You could throw in, like, a Leona for Frontline, or um, many, many other units. Just a Silco to uh, help make your Jinx and your Sivir cast faster. Or even, I've seen some people using Silco to buff up uh, these two guys so that Jarvan casts faster and buffs up your whole team. Just make sure you have something here so that... Uh, Silco's not getting hooked because that will be very bad, especially when this comp doesn't have that much frontline. But yeah, this is a very uh, like straight up generic board to play that I think you know works really well with Striker Spat, works really well with uh, Scrap Emblem, um, a lot of stuff. I, I really I still like this version a lot more than the Hextech version, though you can potentially play six or eight Hextech. The thing is that a Hextech Emblem is not actually very strong. Um, if you saw like a few patches ago, they actually literally took Hextech Emblem out of the game because it wasn't strong enough because you still cannot play 8 Hextech on level 8 because Alistar is one of the Hextech that you have to play. Um, so you have to go level 9 to play 8 Hextech, which makes it really weak to just play with an Emblem. If you have uh, the augment that just says your team has plus 1 Hextech, then you don't actually have to play around uh, the Alistar. Um, at, or you, you do have to play around the Alistar, but you can play it all at level 8, right? Um, but if you have just the Emblem, then you have to go 9 to play 8 Hextech, which is why it's a bit weaker. Um, and I still think the 6 Hextech version is not as strong as something like this, though. This is obviously not the generic version. I slotted in the Silco and this to get uh, the 5. Or it's really going to be 6 Striker when you have plus 1 Striker variation. And obviously Striker Jinx is really strong. And prior to having Jinx, you can just have Ezreal pull the Striker Emblem. It'll be your scrap. Uh, fits in perfectly into this comp. And then once you hit Jinx, just take out Ezreal, put Jinx in, put the Striker Emblem on her. You are chilling. All right, so I got one more comp for you guys. I gave you guys a few bonus comps, um, and that is Arcanists. I think Arcanists, um, I mean, here's a here's a clip from a video of mine a few days ago where I got to eight Arcanists with a Lucian carry, and he was just absolutely popping off, just one-shotting the entire team. I think Arcanists can be incredibly strong uh, in the current meta. If you just get plus one Arcanist, you get good augments for it. Uh, this board I'm showing here is just a six Arcanist board with, in my opinion, the best way to cap out the comp, which is just Cinco, Cinco, Silco plus Jinx. Um, Jinx is just going to do a lot of damage with the uh, extra AP from the Arcanist. She's only getting 50 at six, though. If you get to eight, she's going to do a ton of damage. Um, but yeah, she's just extra damage. Also some healing reduction if you don't have it already. Um, and then Silco just makes your entire team live longer, which is really, really nice. Uh, and also is really nice for making Victor cast faster because like game is going to be your big carry. Um, but yeah, you can obviously play like an eight Arcanist board. If you get plus one Arcanist, um, just get in your Brand, wherever he is. He's a one cost, so he would be with the one cost probably. Um, so you can just get in Brand and then cut, say, the Jinx and just play Silco uh, and play eight Arcanist. This board is totally fine, quite strong level eight and level nine. You can get in Jinx and you'll be chilling. Um, like I showed in my video, um, there is also a twin shot variation where you're playing around Lucian, um, so you might 
not end up playing uh, Silco and then just play Lucian because Lucian holds an Arcanist Spatula really well. And he's also going to give you Hextech, which is pretty minor, but it's something. Uh, and then he's also going to give you Twin Shot, which is really nice. And then when you go 9, um, or if you have multiple Arcanist Spatulas, then you can end up putting them both here and then playing something like a Silco over Brand. Um, so I think this comp is really strong as well. Definitely uh, one to play around if you get a lot of Arcanist Spatulas. Um, and yeah, I mean... Like I said, if you get a Synaptic Spatula for Mutant, then you're probably just playing around Mutants. But uh, if you get like an Arcanist Spatula and it's not Synaptic Lobby, then I would definitely look around playing this. And then you can item hold Ari for a while, then eventually switch the items to Victor if you get to super, super late game. Um, and yeah, those are my best comps of patch 12.9. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'm enjoying this comp, this uh, patch a lot. Um, oh yeah, just a few random closing thoughts about the meta in general. So here are items by win rate as you can see all the radiant items are obviously doing very well there are some that are doing better than others though um things like banshee silence and shroud and rascal's clever really strong statics is also really good locket a lot of the utility ones are very high up and some of the worst ones are things like rabidons um dragon's will um rose thorn vest hextech life blade stuff like that um the other thing i want to cover are the really op emblems um so innovator emblem what we see here is according to meta tft the highest rank in the S rank of uh, emblems. We also have Clockwork, like I talked about, that is really strong. Mutant, like I talked about, that's also really strong. And then things like Debonair, so that would be for Talon Reroll or for that Debonair Dravenborn. Sniper Emblem, which can just be for a multiple snipers comp, which I didn't show, but it's pretty straightforward. You usually go Bruiser Snipers, but you can also go Bodyguard Snipers. It's pretty flexible. Um, but you can usually just play like four Bruiser, four Sniper and have a really strong board uh, with like a Caitlyn Vi and uh, Sejuanian so that you get Enforcer. Um, and then, yeah, once once you go down further, there's quite a big drop off from those. So Assassin Emblem's okay, Scrap and Scholar are okay. Um, and then if you go all the way down, something like a Mercenary Emblem tends not to do that well. We even see Arcanist Emblem for pretty low. So um, maybe maybe I rate the, rate the comp higher than it should be, or maybe some people are just playing it poorly. I'm not 100% sure. I've had decent success with it, but um, yeah. Probably if you get ch the choice between a Mutant Emblem and an Arcanist Emblem, you're probably choosing Mutant, though. Th there's definitely spots where Arcanist Emblem is strong, so I wouldn't get too scared off it. I think it's also just taken like way more often because it's pretty uh, obvious how to play around it, right? Like three times the pick rate of Syndicate Emblem, um, you know, even more than Striker Emblem. I'm interested in comparing to it to um, like way more than Sniper, way more than Debonair. Uh, 78k? Okay, so Mutant is like taken. Okay, so yeah. In a lot of cases, take Mutant Emblem. So, Arcanist Emblem can be good, like as you saw in my uh, video a few days ago, but not the not in every situation. Um, but yeah, so so I just want to warn you guys about the the emblems because some are stronger than others. You know, like Bruiser Emblem down here, Chemtech Emblem down here, um, not the strongest one compared to something like just slam picking an Innovator Emblem. Like that's in most cases just going to be the right choice for you. Um, so it depends on your items, your augments, all those kind of things. Um, but yeah. As I, as I also said, um, just talking about like the tempo of how the uh, the game looks right now, I think people are capping their boards out really, really highly. I think, um, I mean, you do still have to roll early to stabilize your board if you're going to die, um, but you really, really, really need to have a late game plan for what you're doing with your emblem, what you're doing with your augments, all that kind of stuff, because if you don't, if you just play like, oh, I'll just play a random board and like try to figure it out as I go along, I mean, that's a good way, but you... Uh, it's a good way to play the game and to play strongest board and to win streak, uh, but you do have to figure out some OP way to cap out your board, whether that's playing, you know, six clockwork or seven mutant or, you know, a synaptic bat R or seven innovators or something, because people are going to be playing all these comps and you are going to be dying if you don't hit some really strong late game comp. And that can also just be like win streaking a lot, saving up all your gold and then playing around five costs. Um, oh, and the other thing I wanted to say, actually, uh, talking about five costs, maybe think of it, um, Oriana. Very, very strong unit here. So we see um, Meta TFT orders all the units by uh, their their tier ranking. Usually it's all the five costs in a clump. You know, this is the only time I've seen this uh, at all recently. Oriana is better than Jinx and is better than Tom Kenshir. So uh, this Oriana unit is kind of gross. And that's kind of what I was talking about towards the Enchanters uh, idea. Um, there also was the uh, Enchanters version um, the Enchanters comp that a lot of people were playing, the Chinese Enchanters comp, I called it in my video. Um, I didn't make a uh, spot for it on the tier list because it did actually get hotfix nerfed. The ability to stack redemptions was nerfed, so I don't think it's that strong anymore. You can just play around Enchanters normally, you don't have to play like a triple 
by Redemption Lulu Board. Um, okay, that is going to be it. I don't want to make the video too, too long. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, check out all my links down below. You can donate to the channel, follow my Twitch, um, Twitter, join my Discord. Um, that's probably where we will see all the updates for all my content. So check out my Discord, all that kind of stuff uh, down below. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching.